Frankly, people are tired of hearing about the countless thousands of people who've been killed, raped, or driven from their homes in Darfur, Eastern Chad. I'm Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times, and at this point, I'll do just about anything to get people's attention to the situation, even tag along with a Hollywood star. I ended up with a famous roommate, George Clooney, and he was considerate enough to take the bad side of the room. You know, is it kind of uh, a good feeling to run across people who have no idea who you are? Actually, that's not true. See what you just said? She said, I liked you in Batman and Robin. Now it's hard to find people like that. I think she was just praising Brad Pitt. Everybody does that. On my 10th trip to the area around Darfur, I was a little hesitant to spend a week traveling with a Hollywood celebrity. I mean, celebrities are used to dashing around in private jets. being swarmed by adoring crowds, and having their pictures taken. So what do they really know about the issues? My job isn't to, um, uh, to try and cover the news as much as my job is to be here while you're covering the news or while uh, Ann Curry, who we're here, is covering the news, and that'll help us um, get a little more attention onto it. Over the years, I've watched international officials, global leaders, and even journalists dropping the ball on these issues. And so if celebrities can bring a little more attention and put these issues a little bit higher on the agenda, well, I'm all for it. I think that all we can do is go somewhere where cameras might show up. If it's not going to be on the nightly news or it's not going to be in, you know, on Oprah and on people's uh, television sets all the time, then uh, it needs a boost. And the boost means putting somebody famous uh, in front of it. In the process, Clooney thinks that maybe he can learn a few things. It's very tricky for people like myself who come and dip their toe in for a week to get the real picture. You can get a certain picture and it's probably a better picture than trying to figure it out from Los Angeles. You try to be informed and not be a total idiot on the subject. You know? I haven't done that, but that's what you try to do. But all jokes and frisbee tosses aside, there are glimmers of hope in eastern Chad. After Barack Obama was elected, the Darfur refugees here were so thrilled that they renamed School Number no. 1, a small mud brick building with dirt floors and no windows, the Obama School. The day it was elected, it was a, there was a, like a small party in the camp, and everybody was really happy because they, they believed that uh, Obama's policy could help. And on the ground, things are improving a little bit. The camps for refugees and displaced people are still grim, but they're safer than they used to be. A couple of years ago, I met Abdullah Idris, a young farmer whose eyes have been gouged out by the Janjaweed. But militias are no longer rampaging and burning villages in eastern Chad or gouging out people's eyes. These days, there is widespread banditry, targeting, aid groups, but by and large, the improved security conditions are thanks to the presence of European military forces led by France. U4 actually has been in many ways a success uh, in creating a safety net in which inside that net these people have been able to function. It seems at this Spartan school in eastern Chad that there is hope among the refugees that President Obama may do more to help end the slaughter and the instability in Sudan. So perhaps before long, our work here will be done, and the cameras won't need to follow George anymore. You know, people don't want to see, they want to turn on their TV and see horrible things happening in Chad all the time. They'll do it once, but the problem is once doesn't fix any of this. It's complicated and it's ongoing, and it requires a constant drumbeat. In goes Beta, Chad, for the New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristoff. And let me just say this, we're bunking together next tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> On our way to the Congo.